We're talking about Of an Age, a queer romance from Australia. It is in theaters today, February 17th. What's the list? So my ex is stuck. <laughs> Your ex is going to kill me. Oh, chill. He won't. We begin in 1999, and um, Elias Anton plays a guy named Nicola. He goes by Cole. Uh, and it is the morning of this big uh, high school dance competition, a ballroom dance competition. But his partner is like, uh, you know, hung over in a phone booth on a beach somewhere and doesn't quite remember how she got there. And, uh, you know, is is a hot mess. So... Cole, in his like ballroom dancing getup, has to get her brother to drive him out to this abandoned beach to pick her up and ideally bring her back in time for the competition. Uh, the brother's name is Adam. He's played by Tom Green. In the car ride, the two of them, the two guys begin to get to know each other. Once they arrive at their destination, Adam basically makes the subtext text and says that he's gay, which Cole is a little bit put off by at first, but obviously the two of them have had this kind of flirtation thing going on while listening to the soundtrack of Happy Together, appropriately <laughs> enough. That's subtle. Um, <laughs> exactly. And so over the course of that day, once the dance competition is definitely not happening, they all go to a party and the two of them are able to, you know, get to know each other a little better, but of course Adam is about to leave the country to go to Buenos Aires. Um, and so, you know, it's this thing of of, of, you know, what might happen, what could be, where would it all go? And then we jump ahead about 10 years for the sister's wedding where they run into each other again and sort of, you know, kind of find out what's become of them and what might still, you know, happen with them. I really love the first part of this movie. Okay. Uh, the, the road trip is so great. Uh, this is like you could show this in film school to talk about how to convey character and plot through camera work and editing mm -hmm. like the close-ups the way that we get to know these people and how they're framed in the shot and those the, just like the micro responses they have to each other and what they say and the way they're they're cut together is so brilliantly done mm -hmm. and it really kind of stokes this tension you believe they're getting to know each other you want to know where it's going to go and, and and you know what the end point of this might be and then when they reunite it's like you know, it, it's interesting to see like Elias Anton aged 10 years because the, his character is a whole other person with a, a very minimal amount of like hair and makeup and wardrobe choices. Yeah, basically. that was pretty efficiently well done there, I thought. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a, that's really cool. There's not as much for them to explore as there had been in the first part, I think. So I don't know. I, I also I was a little unclear about the very beginning of the movie because mm. you're sort of thrown into the middle of something and everybody's mumbling in an Australian accent. So I wasn't <laughs> clear who was talking about what to whom. Um, so may maybe that had been clearer to me than the end part would have made more sense. Uh, but yeah, I, I think there's some really strong stuff here. The performances are, are dynamite. Tom Green and Elias Anton have amazing chemistry. Like it reminded me of weekend at times, mm -hmm. the way that just mm -hmm. watching the two of these guys get to know each other. And again, the, the, the editing and cinematography, I think, is just really sharp. It's it's shot by uh, Matthew Schwang and uh, edited uh, by the director, Gordon Stolevsky. This is his follow-up to um, a film that premiered at Sundance last year uh, called uh, You Won't Be Alone with Numi Rapace. This also premiered at Sundance this year. So this guy is clearly uh, up on the up and up. He's from, originally from North Macedonia and then emigrated to Australia as a teenager, much like the Cole character. Right. There are some, well, Cole is Serbian. Right. Cole yes, is that's Serbian, true. but there's a reference, Adam makes a reference to, to his, his ex-boyfriend ex. who yes. is Macedonian, whose name is Goran. Ah, like I the filmmaker. So there's some personal touches here and there. Yeah, this works for me more as a sustained mood, mm -hmm. as just a, a wistful kind of gauzy atmosphere, the whole melancholy notion of like what could have been. I sure. think we've all like met somebody along the way and you just wonder like, oh, like the time is wrong. Like yeah. what if? And you click and it's amazing, but it can't last. And yeah, yeah this like is a, a before sunrise. <laughs> for sure. This is a lot like weekend. It's yeah. not like call me by your name because it's, you know, it's a romance that can't be. There's an mm -hmm. age difference. Cole is 17 adam is 18. like he's almost he says he's gonna be 19 in three weeks i thought he said he's gonna be 18 in three weeks no 19 anyway he's a senior in high school for sure yes and 
Adam is, because we have a plot contrivance to keep him apart, he is about to leave for Argentina for his, yeah. his PhD. PhD. So he's probably like in his early 20s, mid yeah. 20s. Um, yeah, the way it's shot almost makes it feel like it's suspended in time. Like you forget that you're racing against the clock, right? It's so right. panicky and so intense in the beginning when Ebony, the the ballroom dancing partner, the sister, calls hungover frantic and there's so much panicking to get to her. And of course, because it's 1999, there are no cell phones, no smartphones, so they've <laughs> got to use a map to find her. She booth. has no idea what <laughs> beach she's at. So, um, but the, so the fact that they managed to upend that time element and just make you feel like you are in this sustained kind of like perfect place is, is impressive. Yeah. I like the way that the, the editing captures the sideways glances, like checking out a bicep, like <laughs> the eye contact they make with each other here and there. So that all works. I wish there had been richer characterization to both of these people because mm. they kind of both feel like a collection of a few items like, Cole, why is he a ballroom dancer? Like they, I think it's just to have him running through the streets of Melbourne in this like sparkly <laughs> plunging outfit and to create the, the deadline to get her. But then why that of all things matters to him feels kind of dropped from that point on. Um, why does Adam want to go to South America to study other than like, we need to get him away so that they can't be together. Like it just feels like... Oh. Plot devices, I mean, but not real characterization to me. I don't know. I, I think Ebony is Cole's sort of one friend, I think it's established, mm -hmm. because he is, you know, you, you, there's definite, like, racism going on from other Australians. The fact that he is queer and knows that that's not going to play well among the other Serbians. So this one girl is his friend. She is clearly, like, loves to be the center of attention. You know, she wants to go to acting school. So I could see where, like, ballroom dancing would be a thing that she would drag him into. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe he wants to dance at the Pan Pacifics with Tina Spackles. <laughs> um, uh, Adam even says, like, I wanted to go to Buenos Aires because of mm -hmm. Happy Together. Yeah. You know, so I feel like we get some explanations for okay. that. And, and yeah, I mean, you're right. It is pe two people thrown together. But in the style of something like Before Sunrise, I think we know enough about them. Mm -hmm. And we learn enough about them over the course of the thing to really make that matter. I just wish the whole movie had been that one day. Yeah. And I think that would have been much more powerful than the, than the reunion later and figuring out things. And it's like, it never, that part never landed the same, you know, impact with me that the first part does. It loses tension. And like, of course it can't be like 10 years have passed and stuff's happened. And sure. like, it feels a little redundant. Yeah. yeah. So I'm saying a six and that's just mostly for the mood and the way it's shot. Yeah, I said seven and a half because just for the parts that work, work really well.